Cooperative extension is clearly one of the great inventions in the history of American higher education. The Morrill Land Grant Act in 1862 and the Smith-Lever Act that created the Cooperative Extension Service really have laid the foundation for public universities like Penn State to reach out to the people of their states and beyond and transfer knowledge, transfer educational services, transfer improvements in the quality of life to the people of those states. I'm really proud of what we've done in Cooperative Extension at Penn State. It is one of the most important things that we do at this university. We have a few goals. One is increasing entrepreneurial capacity of our producers. A specialized area of that is local food marketing. And so we want to strengthen local food systems, work with players who are already doing a lot of that. This is such a magnificent setting for a farmer's market. We thought that the city workers and all the office workers around here would really appreciate having a weekly source of fresh food from local farms. Our hope uh, with, with extension involvement is to uh, grow this movement in local farming to something that's much bigger than it is now. The goal of the farm is to prove that you can have a successful urban farm on a small area in Philadelphia. One of the major roles that Cooperative Extension has played here is to partner with us on the internship that we've offered through Weaver's Way Farm and the Philadelphia Outreach Center. So we've brought Candace, who's a student at Penn State. She's interning with the Cooperative Extension Service here at Weaver's Way Farm. So far, honestly, it's been phenomenal. When I started working here at the actual farm, I knew nothing about the actual vegetables that were growing here. After I spent a couple of weeks here, I started learning more about it. I learned how it grew, what it tastes like. I actually made it a goal of mine to try everything on the farm here at least once before I leave. It's so good. But you're really good. Really good. I feel so amazing okay. about what I've done in the day because I know when it's all said and done, I positively affected somebody's life. Everything here is grown organic. I think Cooperative Extension plays a vital role in connecting the farms to the markets and just supporting the farmer, whether it be an urban area or a rural area. I think Philadelphia is in a leadership position to show what can be done, both in the growing food in the city and the outdoor markets that we have and the, the wholesale venues that we've, we've started to build. We have a lot of activity in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia with respect to urban farming uh, and marketing those products locally. So we're incredibly positioned and I'm really excited about the future as we think about entrepreneurial opportunities for our producers here in the state of Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh is known as the Steel City. In the late 70s and very early 80s, the collapse of the steel industry caused us to lose somewhere in the neighborhood of 120,000 people or jobs. One of the problems that we've had is that this population issue has caused the demographics to change. There was a study done about two years ago and they've identified in excess of 14,500 vacant lots just in the city of Pittsburgh. In working with the City of Pittsburgh Mayor's Office and the Urban Redevelopment Authority, Cooperative Extension here, started looking at different strategies for helping these communities deal with this abundance of vacant lots. One of the communities we've been working with is an area called Larimer. We went in, worked with the community, identified some plantings, uh, cleaned the lots out, uh, planted the grass and the different planting materials, and they are being cared for by the community. We began right in this very spot with the Office of the Mayor, Operation Weed and Seed Project, with Penn State. The plants that you see that we did here is a spinoff from last year to 2008, and it appeared like it could have been here for years. So it will make a difference because the education will be there, the training will be there, that we will be able to continue in every community that is much in need of. We feel that we can provide the community with a significant amount of of resources that allows them to address challenges they have. So in terms of public good, and you know, we, we feel that we have a significant impact here.
Emporium is a small town nestled in the heart of the Pennsylvania wilds. The town of Emporium is around 3,400 people. Penn State Cooperative Extension has been vital in the rejuvenization of the business district of Emporium. Some of the improvements that have been made in Emporium include uh, improvements to the visitor's sign coming into town, improvements to the visitor center, making it more available, some storefront renovations and improvements in the downtown area. And one of the new businesses that was created was an artisan co-op in the community that's run by the Chamber of Commerce. This artisan's gallery now exists where a building sat empty for an entire year. Uh, the PA Wilds and Penn State Cooperative Extension was instrumental in getting this building re reusable. We started with our first month of income being around $500, our second month $3,700. The community has just been amazing in their support of this Artisan Center and the money stays right here. It goes back to the artist's pockets and the commission stays here and helps the Chamber of Commerce continue to promote all of Cameron County. We have a range of programs, be they grant writing, facilitation, strategic planning, uh, other kinds of programs that are intended to help existing entities within the community do what they do better so they're more effective. By passing along vital information to them, in a very informal, easy to understand way. Cooperative Extension helps improve the life of residents throughout the state. The CHP, the Combined Heat and Power, uh, really goes back to our roots. Smethport is here because of the force that wrap around it. And the thing that made Smethport click and work and grow was our usage of this natural resource. And so what we're doing here with the Combined Heat and Power Demonstration Project is to utilize our forest, but do it in such a way that we um, take care of the forest and make it sustainable. What we're really trying to do is to develop a win-win situations in terms of renewable and alternative energies where we uh, address environmental issues and at the same time develop uh, energy resources that can contribute to uh, lower energy costs and more economic opportunities for the local um, communities. We had a real opportunity in the community of Smithport to be able to utilize our woody biomass resource that is surrounding the community to actually provide all the heat, hot water, and electric power within the community of Smethport. Smethport happens to own its own electric company, and we've never had our own power plant. And so we buy the power wholesale, and the money has always historically left our economy. With the CHP plant, we will be utilizing our fuel and recycling our income and our money from this within the county and driving our local economy. That's what makes it so important. When doing a project like this, the partnerships that are created are critical. And all of us working together with the leaders in Smithport is really what's making this project actually move forward in a positive way. My thanks to Penn State Extension for what they've done for Smithport and McKean County, and my thanks to Penn State for, for bringing the wisdom that you have there to us and allowing our community to develop. Smithport's a great opportunity for demonstrating uh, renewable energy. And our hope is that developing some of these alternative energy possibilities can make Pennsylvania a better place to live. In Pennsylvania, I think we've been aware for a long time that changes in the Chesapeake Bay, in the estuary itself with aquatic life, are indicators of what's coming out of Pennsylvania and the other states. Runoff is one of the major means in which um, pollution ends up coming from the landscape to downstream water bodies. The big picture issue here is how do we better work manure into no-till systems. The noise you hear in the background are some pumps that we're using to run rainfall simulators. 
that uh, we're using to generate runoffs. And the rain simulator is an extremely important tool from the standpoint of quantifying the impact of different management practices on runoff so that you can address production priorities and also minimize concerns with regard to the environment, particularly water quality. The benefits of no-till include the, the economic savings from fuel. They improve our soil quality, which then results in better moisture utilization. And with less runoff, we have less pollutants getting into the Chesapeake Bay and the Susquehanna River. The cooperation that we have with Penn State University Cooperative Extension has been very, very important to promoting no-till in Pennsylvania. I think we're all going to influence the, the future landscape of Pennsylvania together. The safety of the food supply is, is imperative for the, the well-being of people you know, throughout the state and throughout the country. Well, the Serve Safe course is a 16-hour course, and it's designed for food handlers, and when they pass their test, then they're eligible for the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture Food Safety Certificate. And so that allows them to put that certificate in their restaurant or in their place of business, and you know that the individuals that are serving the food in the restaurant are providing it in a safe manner. Are you guys giving them more coffee? Yeah. I first found out about Serve Safe from my health inspector and she recommended that I do it through the Penn State Extension. I believe Serve Safe has benefited my business because customers appreciate the fact that you are educated. I would definitely like all my employees to be Serve Safe certified. I believe the most important thing about the Serve Safe is the health of your customers. <laughs> Between the college faculty and the extension network throughout the state, Penn State is able to provide expertise to everybody, from whether it's the consumers to the food service, as well as to producers and farmers who grow the products. I'm very proud of our extension educators who work to bring the audiences and target the audiences for our programs. They are a phenomenal group of people who uh, do anything to help create education at the community level. The overall goal of PROSPER is to help strengthen families, uh, to help reduce substance use among youth, and to give you some positive skills and reduce other problem behaviors among youth in those communities. PROSPER actually has two separate components. It has a program for the youth. The youth go and they're learning about um, life skills, how to communicate, how to make decisions. At the same time, the parents are meeting and they're talking about parenting skills, family communication, and then at the end of the evening they come together and the families and the kids work together on some of these skills. And, and what we're seeing is really kind of exciting, especially for the whole family unit. When Karen and I went through the PROSPER program, we still treated her like the baby. I think after we did the Prosper, during it, we got to see her as a, more of an older child, you know, someone who could make her own decisions and start growing up a little bit to be a teen. So I think that made us stronger for us. We did spend a lot more family time together afterwards. We had like more game nights than we had before and those are really nice. I like that. So we, we did communicate a little more. We found through the PROSPER program that communities who are willing to provide one dollar in youth development programming to the youth of their community are benefiting by saving nine dollars and sixty cents in the juvenile justice system and drug and alcohol prevention support and things like that. So it's really been a positive way of working in the communities and showing them the benefits of the program. I'm really grateful they do it. I think Cooperative Extension, you know, is present here in Perry County and they do a lot of things and um, it's always so fun. It's family oriented and um, that really, I think, brought us together and made us stronger.
Cooperative Extension is an incredible investment for the people of Pennsylvania. We reach about one out of every two households in the state every single year. So the benefits are incredible for the people of the state and much of the advancement that we see in quality of life, whether it's through production agriculture, through nutrition, through 4-H, through child development and family relations, community and economic development can all be traced back to programs around cooperative extension. The recent study done with citizens of Pennsylvania, and they asked what their, some of their expectations from their legislators and what they cared about. Extension was number two. I think that was powerful showing how important the work of our extension educators out across the state are. It's so valued by our community, and I think that's the most and the strongest endorsement we can receive. I can't tell you how grateful I am to the people who work in our cooperative extension service. They know everybody in every community. The spirit in cooperative extension is always so positive. And I just get incredible accolades as I go around the state for what we do for the people of Pennsylvania. So I really appreciate the work everyone does.